Welcome to Dayton Warcry Club. I'm Warren, and today I'm joined by Zach. Today we'll be going over all the Warcry-related previews from Warhammer Fest this week, plus some additional rants and speculation. Hey Zach, how's it going? Hey, great. Excited to talk about this uh, this Warhammer Fest previews uh, that we got the past couple days. Yeah, it was a thing. Um, it was kind of exciting, kind of a letdown, I want to say. I, I was definitely let down, specifically by the Warcry previews. I think um, anytime there's a preview of a preview and they didn't uh, build up the expectations correctly, you're going to get a lot of um, disappointment in that community. Yeah, people people really had their hopes up about everything being delivered and stuff like that. And I, you know, I tell people like just enjoy what you got. Don't expect much from GW. You never be disappointed. And then you'll always be pleasant, or you'll always be pleasantly surprised when you ever you do get something. And I think what we're gonna get is going to be substantial. Um, I just think it's they have a lot coming out in the meantime that they are they should be focusing on, which is fine. Uh, we're, my guesstimate is we're probably looking somewhere around the October, November timeline for these Warcry th releases. Um, but that's a long time. Um, my observation is that Games Workshop uh, generally previews things uh, in a lot shorter timeline. So coming out with this stuff now is a little bit premature. Yeah, true. <clears throat> Well, anyway, so today we'll get, have our usual hobby update, and then we'll be talking about some of the Warhammer Fest previews. Uh, I picked out the stuff that was interesting to me. Uh, you're talking about a little bit about the, the Horns of Hashet Warband, uh, some of the new Sy Sylvaneth, um, the Olgrids and the Centaurians look kind of cool. Got a few rants about uh, some other stuff that we saw. And then also uh, we saw some interesting uh, Kill Team 40K stuff as well you may want to incorporate into your, uh, into your Warcry games. So hobby update, you know, you were cranking them out. So you got like <laughs> Seraphons up the up the yin yang here. Yeah. So um, I am looking to get started into the three D printing um, realm of the hobby. Um, all of those Seraphon minus the front three Saurus guards are three D printed. There's also a D and D model in there, but um, I picked those up off of Etsy. Um, we got eight skink spitters um looks like nine skink handlers and three uh salamanders as well as um what i'm building out as an eternity warden um there in the middle in the back um they're like 85 percent done i wish i had taken the time to finish them there's just like a little i have to do the spears and then i gotta wash everything and do a little bit more basing work but they're pretty close to done so they'll be table ready um here in the near future sweet <clears throat> and then so my update and it's not done but so part of this whole deal like this is like you know another form of hobby accountability so this is me sharing my progress uh so i had my brother in town and so well you know we're hanging out watching movies or and stuff like that and uh, yeah, I had the time to break out, uh, do a little more detailed work on this uh, on this uh, 40k kill team terrain. So, and the reason why I, I really want to knock this out is because the next terrain project is going to be building Red Harvest. So mm -hmm. you got to get you got to finish your your vegetables before you get to have your dessert sort of thing. Yeah. So, but it's I'm liking how the details looking right now. Um, I got a little bit of you know fine detail work next. Uh, and then, you know, just a big, you know, wash slather after that. And, um, yeah, this should be pretty much done putting paint on minis. Yeah. You take everything to such a, an excellent detailed level that, I mean, I honestly, I, I would be the first to admit, I don't have the patience to do terrain to the detail level that you do. Um, and it's honestly impressive. It's, um, I spend way too much time on it, but again, <laughs> it's my, it's my happy place. It's my, it's my Zen place. Yeah, it, there's no pressure on it because if it looks yeah. crappy, you could just say, oh, it's just terrain. Right. Exactly. You know, much, much easier for me to do this than, you know, I'm staring at like, you know, my tool, my two uh, wing leaders for flesh eater courts, which is all I need to make that playable. And I'm like, ah, man, what if I mess up these little details? Like, <laughs> I know it doesn't matter, but like just in terms of getting started, it's, uh, you know, it's, you know, what, what gets you started and sitting down and then like, you know, you can let 
inertia or your OCD, you know, take you from there. Yeah. But yeah, keep on keep it on going on that. So one thing that I've always thought about the Chalnath terrain is that it looks like a little bit too big. Oh yeah, it's it, it it's more 40k terrain. Yeah. And the rules are sort of weird for it in Kill Team. It's you know, there's special rules because it's so far up. Because mm. it's like the equivalent of like you know, it's equivalent of like a two or three story building. Yeah. <clears throat> and I have an even bigger one also that's not for Kill Team, but like one of that's like two of those stories tall that I'll eventually be doing. So, I mean, it's it serves dual purpose. I could eventually play like you know have a small to medium 40k board as well. So it's yeah, there's a dual purpose to kind of getting all the stuff. So we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some kill team stuff a little bit later though too. Hint hint. Yeah. But let's talk about Warcry. So uh, if you're watching this, you're probably a fan of Warcry. You saw that uh, you're probably waiting with bated breath about what's going to happen with the new Warcry. And so we got a new logo. Uh, well, actually, well we got a new location. So it's going to Gur, and I'm not a big lore guy. Um, mm -hmm. everything I know about the lore I got from Salty C's, uh, little preview video there because I didn't, I didn't want to sit and like watch the stream. Did you watch the stream live? Uh, I caught the back end. Okay. Like, but it took them, like, how long did they spend going over all the stuff? Uh, like, I would say it was maybe 25 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe for war cry, but the overall stream was like 90 minutes. Like I said, I only caught the back half, oh, but okay. somewhere around there. Yeah. But it like they drag it out, right? <laughs> they do. Um, yeah, it, it was a little bit, a lot of talking for not a lot of action. Yeah. Um, they they did say some things that caught my attention that were not in the write up. Um, first, uh, the one that really caught my attention um, was I don't know who it was, but one of the guys on the stream said this was the biggest change to Warcry since the release. Mm -hmm. Um, which I, that wasn't in the write up, and that's something that really caught my attention. Um, yeah, I hope it's not a rules change. See, I don't think it's going to be a major rules change either, right? So, I mean, yeah. here's 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 the place where we get to speculate and stuff. Um, and so again, granted, so I'm biased, right? I think the game's very very good as is, and you know, if it if it didn't really change, then I'd be perfectly happy. So I don't yeah. want to see it change a whole lot. Um, I, you know, a new location may, yeah. you know, the new location, the new logo. I mean, they've done this before. Like they'll do, they do this more frequently in 40 K and kill team. Like their yeah. roadmap for kill team is there's a new box set every quarter. The 40 K quote unquote narrative changes every three to six months. They say, all right, now we're going to the Octarius sector. Now we're going to the Nachman sector. And there's like some new match play stuff that kind of gets released there. It doesn't change. It doesn't change the overall rule set much. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't invalidate previous lists. Um, I feel like you know, talking about the new rules, right? I feel like so people are like really gun shy because uh, recency bias, right? Like kill team eighteen to twenty one. People, people that experienced that had some major shock because that was a, a huge revamping of the game. Right. You if you had a certain team like it was, you know, most teams were not legal when, you know, they did not make that transition. Yeah. Um, so I don't see them doing that. I think they I think that's going to be more the exception rather than the rule. The other major one I could think of is when they made a major change like this to this extent was like going from Warhammer Fantasy Battle to Age of Sigmar. That was a big deal, too. But so that was like six years ago. And that you're going from square bases to round bases, completely changing the way the game is played. What I see this being is like not even a 2.0. Like, you know, you could call it Kill Team 2.0 because it was a drastic change. This yeah. is like, it's like a Warcry 1.5 or a minor update, like a new edition. Like, I could see that. Like, um, someone, someone kind of compared it to like Blood Bowl, right? Blood Bowl is... Uh, you know, Blood Bowl had a, a second season update with a couple rules, tweaks, and stuff, but nothing huge. Um, you know, Necromunda, by and large, I think has remained the same, like you know, throughout all the expansions and stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not 
I'm not a big fan of calling it Warcry 2.0. Like, Definitely not. I think I had mentioned this to you earlier that I, I'm very much in the, the 1.5 camp as well. Um, Warcry, I think, got hurt of out of all the, the GW products the most by COVID, right? The game launched in 2019? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it didn't get a lot of time to get a bunch of Steam. It didn't get to run a lot of events before the world shut down for two years. Um, I think this is going to be a soft relaunch of the game with a wide variety of new bespoke war bands. And I have some more thoughts on that as well. Um, yeah. Uh, with a new terrain set. So I, it's basically, I feel like it's going to be like the core launch 2.0. I think yeah. we're going to get a core box with two new war bands, one of which I think we've seen in here already. And then I think we're going to get uh, four to eight new bespoke war bands, which I have some, like I said, but, I have some yeah, interesting but not thoughts all, on those. Right, but not all chaos. Not all It'd chaos. Be, like a little more inclusive, right? So instead of having like destruction and death kind of be an afterthought, like equal representation from the four grand alliances. Yeah, so I took some notes um, before this video about uh, the distribution of warband options. Um, chaos has 21 different warband options order has 13 destruction has five and death has four so there's a very big disparity in uh playable factions so i'd definitely be looking for them to um, build out those lower two at least with one or two warbands because we already know chaos is getting one so mm -hmm. yep they really need to buffer out those other two um as regarding the location, I don't know if this was mentioned in the release, but in the stream, uh, it was confirmed that it is a jungle terrain. Yeah, you get your jungle potentially. Yeah, been been wanting something like that for uh, multi-purpose use. Um, and he uh, the the release says it's a quote unquote a new place to skirmish over, end quote. And then there was an asterisk, and at the bottom, this was just them being cute, and it says under and around. So it's a new place to skirmish over, under, and around. So if there's going to be trees in the jungle, I'm I'm wondering if it's going to be kind of like an Ewok village vibe. That's like my that's my speculation on what kind of terrain we're going to see. Okay, we're going to see trees, right? But it's not going to be soul drain forest where they're just line of sight block. There there's going to be verticality in the game. Yeah, that was, I would love to see, yeah, keep the verticality, because that's, that's the hook. That's one yeah. of the major hooks. Definitely. So, you mentioned the jungle, and so I guess lore-wise, apparently these guys want to burn down the jungle. Yeah. <clears throat> they want to log the jungle for chaos or something like this. I can imagine, like, Captain Planet coming, coming to save them. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of like this war band, but then... When you get down to the chaff units, it's just generic oh, they, barbarian tribe they number look, five. They look, yeah, the, the generic dudes look like just, I mean, they got a little bit of character to them, but yeah, they look like random mopes. But the helmets are sweet. Yes, the helmets are helmets sweet. Helmets are sweet. The, the dude's got a flamethrower, like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, could, I feel like the chaff, and you could say this for a lot of chaos chaff, especially all the, the barbarian X tribes, depending on how you paint them, you could easily slip those into any war band. Like if you painted those, yeah. right, you could be like, these are, uh, yeah. Yeah. I corn. mean, you have, you have multiple, right. Or you have multiple, like, you know, if you don't like basic chaos marauders, you could swap mm -hmm. them out for chaos marauders pretty easily. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I like, I like, these guys are all right. They got some character, but I mean, there's so many other, like, cultists and then also like mm -hmm. i don't know if they're gonna have like a big guy the the big guy we're gonna talk about a little bit later i don't know if he's part of this war band or if he's just like a neutral big guy uh, um, he had a lot of the same aesthetics i would imagine that he's related to the horns of a shit because yeah. because that's the one thing that's the one thing i you know i really want to kind of dig into a little bit when we talk about like you know bespoke versus aos war bands and it's like you know what what don't they have? And this looks like I mean this is cool and all. They probably got some cool abilities, but it's a bunch of dudes and you know I'm, you know pretty sure their hit points top out at twenty. You know no no bigger dudes, no flyers. It's just another 
another cult war band. So they, I mean, mm-hmm. they would match up well versus the other cults, I'm sure. But so that actually brings me to my biggest takeaway from their their discussion of new war bands. Um, the release said, "quote unquote," some of which may surprise you about the the new war bands coming out. And I thought about that for a while. Um, and if there are no unknown factions, what would be a really big surprise? I cool. think a some new boxes of existing bespoke factions, specifically the chaos ones, would be reprints. Well, you're biased because you want you're biased because you want new Iron Golems expansion. Sure, yeah. And but the I community also think thinking, and, and the community is thinking chaos dwarves. Sure. <clears throat> um. I just think that that would be something that would surprise people, not necessarily just iron golems. Like, you know, Corvus, if you put out yeah. Corvus Cabal, if you put out a new box of, of that faction and the only units that go between them are the, the chaff units, like that's going to sell to anybody who has Corvus Cabal, anybody who has iron golems, they're going to be a lock to purchase that. Yeah. You also got to think though, like if, does it make sense? Well, you also talked about, like, if you think that Starter or the new soft reboot is going to come with, like, some of their own unique war bands, they'd all be, like, local and have a storyline reason for being in Gur, right? So That's a good point, are, yeah, Why are the Corvus hanging out in Gur? Why would the Iron Golems be in Gur? You know, you have to, they have to come up with some reason for that, too. That's a very good point. Uh, and that's a very good point against my point. They, yeah, um, they may or may not. I don't know. I mean, we also, it might be the first time we see uh, bubble, what are they called, bubble wrapped? Or bubble bubble boxes? Oh, blister packs. Blister packs, yeah. Blister packs of um, bespoke war bands. That's very unlikely, um, but I think that'd be super cool. They don't really, yeah, they don't do a lot of blister packs anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> well... Uh, the other thing that people are talking about, they look kind of cool. So there's new Sylvaneth. Mm-hmm. Those look awesome. The paint yeah. job is fantastic. It, it's not really my aesthetic, like fancy wood elves and stuff. But like, you know, after you see in the, the Sylvaneth in action at Adepticon, like the mobility, the speed, and like this is some other cool stuff that kind of goes with that. Like I could, I could, I don't see myself playing them. But I can mm-hmm. definitely see myself like respecting them a lot more, and they they just get more of this kind of speed and mobility and and uh, and shooting here. So that um, archer on the right really looks like it's calling to you. <laughs> it's doing your favorite thing that models do. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, see. I mean, he at least rock. looks at least looks like he's jumping over a rock, right? Yeah. Like, uh. Yeah, so I mean they look all right. Uh, so, and I guess these are going to be part of a like some other box set. We'll talk about them in just a sec here. But uh, yeah, new Sylvaneth uh, may or may not come to Warcry. Depends on what sort of rules box or rules update uh, you know has everything. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, and as far as we, I don't know if we got into what our speculation is on the rules update that much. Um, I thought that. Um, what they were kind of implying is that uh, there's not going to be a rules update per se, but what I kind of got from it was that we're going to see rules options, play options, different ways to play. Um, I feel like that's a great way for them to expand their game out without fundamentally changing what's pretty much a well-balanced game as far as mechanics go. Obviously, you're going to have different balance issues between factions, Um but they can adjust points to handle that at any point in time. But I do think we're going to see some other modes of play, um, probably related to the specific terrain that comes in the new set. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was talking about, like, if you're going to introduce these, like, how would you introduce them? Uh, You know, are they going to have stats in a white dwarf? Uh, You know, to they're going to be stats in a white dwarf. Is there going to be, like, a free PDF with the stats? We And then when, when their stats come out if they're going to be introduced into war cry like i wonder if we'll see a tome of champions 22 at the end of this year they've pushed out a lot of product yeah with new units right or it could be like an atomic champions right just like how they introduced all of like the the underworld stuff Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, I bet we see a Tome of Champions 22 um, at the end of this year because Tome of Champions 21 was um, kind of held up. So it, it's going to feel like it was, you know, a little quick on the release for 22. But I mean, it really got held up for probably what, like three or four months. Yeah. So I think it's likely we see a Tome of Champions 22. Depends, right? And then just depends on the timing, uh, and then you know the extent of the rules change for whatever we get next as well. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. What else? We, and then other things that might be coming to a to a an army near you. So this is from the AOS reveal. So Slaves of Darkness is getting ogroids. So big ass, you know, they almost look like Minotaur Bestigor dudes. But yeah, so that. They're coming to the the big umbrella slave to, slaves to darkness. So how many points is the ogroid monster? The ogroid myrmidion is close to three hundred. So those have got to be high two hundred point units, as is. One sec. And there's a lot of eight points flavor on those ogroids too, so I wouldn't be surprised if they make their way to more cry um, whenever the next um, like Tome of Champions 22 or whatever product comes out, whatever book comes out that they put stats in. I would, wouldn't be surprised to see those in there. Yeah, Myrmidon is 295. 295 okay so yeah. I, I would imagine those are probably somewhere in like the 270 to 290 range yeah um maybe you can play like three <laughs> yeah i mean it. i don't think i don't think it's gonna be a ma- I, like i don't think to get their own war band like that no, would be just not. that would be ridiculous but like it's a big guy option it's a big mm-hmm. guy option for slaves of darkness if they just sprinkle them in I mean, that could really be a big boon to the all those bespoke warbands that suffer from topping out at 25, 20 wounds, you know, sprinkle in one ogroid, and then yeah. you have your big beefy guy. And I kind of talked about this, right? Like, instead of the ally rule, like, being open up to everything, like, mm-hmm. you know, the handful of universal allies you get, like, not just the thralls, but, like, you know, Minesweavers for ranks, og- ogroid myrmidian, um, or myrmidon. Uh, you know, if you just allow those to like fill in gaps, like if you had a small, a, a small curated set of allies that weren't too broken, but not, you know, but worth taking if you had that gap in your warband, you could, you know, you could offer those and balance out things. That could be a, a lever you can pull on overall game balance. It also really incentivizes um, people purchasing those things. Um, You know, I I have a couple um, Chaos War bands, and if I could buy Ogroids and we could split a box of Ogroids, I get one, you get one, Fred gets one, and we all, you know, we can play them in multiple War bands. Like, that seems pretty lucrative. Yeah, well, I mean, David got his, David got a Myrmidon, and Mm -hmm. like, you know, he played it, he played it in Corn last weekend when my brother was in town, but uh, I think it would work pretty well in, you know, if, it's a big guy that fills a certain gap for uh, for Corvus if he wants to run it in Corvus. So mm-hmm. definitely. And then we got the uh, the giant. I don't know if a centaur is the right word because he's got Cent- eight limbs. Centaurion, I believe his name was. Oh yeah, he does got four arms. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and he's got so, a yeah, I- interesting tail too. Yeah, so he's coming in Gur. Uh, so yeah, you might have some other weird ass big monsters there. Um, something I thought that was interesting about him is he's holding four different weapons. You gotta wonder, um, <laughs> does the sprue come with different options? Like, if you build him with the net, is the net like a built in? Like, you must play it, or you know, are there multiple options for each arm? That you yeah, know, I don't know. To find the kit. It could be like something like a storm fiend where you know there's eight different builds to a storm fiend that's a little bit of an exaggeration but not much yeah i know we'll see it yeah. again these guys coming who knows when all this stuff coming who knows when which is part all right now it's rant time now it's rant time <laughs> so yeah we don't know like what what exactly what's coming 
they just like, here's a little bit of stuff to get you excited. But when's it coming? Oh, who knows, right? It's coming soon. Like It was very much the classic announcement of an announcement. Like, hey, there's yeah. something coming. And that's it. Yep. Uh, you know, people were kind of thinking like, oh, hey, if they're going to be like, you know, standalone boxes for the Tarantulos, the Dargoth, maybe repackaging of the Underworld's boxes specifically for Warcry instead of them mm-hmm. being discontinued. Nothing about that. And so if it is happening, I don't know, they'll drop it on us. They'll surprise us, I guess. Maybe they just want to sell off these, uh, you know, sell off all these other Underworlds ones here first. Get them you know, all rotated out. I don't know. But it seems strange for them to announce that Underworlds is going to dry up at the same time they pushing out a new Underworlds product. Like, hey, here's a new Underworlds box. Also, Underworlds, we're canceling all of these Underworlds products. Like, well, I mean, they're old ones. It's, well, it's, it's just... It's like a set rotation thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you can't buy you can't buy magic set. You know, they, you know, magic sets from two years ago are out of print. So, so I mean, I I get that from a from a line management standpoint that they need to do that. Just yeah, the timing is kind of funky. So, and I mean, Games Workshop is you know also has a reputation for for capitalizing on people's FOMO. So you know, get them before they're gone, but so in this yeah. case, in this case, they got me. Uh, they got I, me too. <laughs> yeah, I put my I put my order in, and I actually did them from GW Direct uh, because. So I, I'm usually looking for other places first because you usually get a little bit of a discount. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the ones I wanted, I wanted uh, Sepulchral Guard, I wanted Spike Claws Swarm, and I wanted uh, Gashrax Raiders. Mm, okay. Uh, for to for current or future war bands. Those are the best. Those are the best ones of the bunch that are rotating out. So, mm-hmm. uh, and you, get, I could get Grashrax Raiders from one from one place. I couldn't find Sepulchral Guard anywhere. Spike Claw was at one place earlier this week, but then they they sold out. And so I'm seeing it kind of happen, right? Like, yeah. And very little availability, like on eBay or any other place else like that. And so, a lot of these. I mean, if you look at the release dates from 2018 or so for some of these war bands, some of these little mm, boxes, okay. um, they are, yeah, they've been out for a while. They're starting, and they're definitely kind of starting to dry up. So, um, again, it's, I, I mean, it, they've been there. It's not like a get it this weekend or it's gone sort of thing. Like they've been out there for a while. They've been available. I don't see it as a FOMO thing, but uh, yeah, get them before they're gone. You could say the same for a lot of the start collecting boxes. I think once those are gone, um, they're shifting over to the Vanguard boxes. Yeah. So we're going to see start collecting boxes start to dry up. Um, I, I did get FOMO'd into buying an Ideneth Deepkin from uh, start collecting box. Um, out of all the start collecting boxes, it's actually one of the best ones for Warcry in that every single unit is playable in Warcry. So. Yeah, because a lot of the a lot of stuff they give us for AOS has like big thing, big stuff or centerpiece units that just like, mm-hmm. yeah, you don't need it. Yeah, which which is lame. So yeah, so there's there's one there's one rant there. Uh, what we got another one here? So couple couple new characters, couple new little characters uh, announced. <laughs> but all right. We got to talk here, GW. All right, the cat, the tactical rocks are getting out of hand. Okay, now, okay, so you got a vampire lord dude. I guess he's from a book. We got the death master. We got a new death master sculpt, which is, I mean, he's just like standing there, right? They're both just standing there on like the rocks or branches. Okay, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, plus the vampire guy, like, can't he turn into a bat? Like, why does he need to stand like? you know, a couple feet up on that thing. So, yeah, I, you know, the, these tactical rocks are getting out of hand. Like, if I ever got either of these, I would be like, yep, yeah, we're chopping this. We're chopping a, you know, half an inch off this thing and get them back to, get them back to regular size. <clears throat> you know, if it's a dynamic pose or the jumping over it, I mean, that's, you know, that's one thing. But, and, you know, talking about the Death Master here. So, I mean, this is, this is the Death Master. Look at that guy compared to this guy. He's just sitting there like, does that look like a guy in Warcry with a 10-inch move that can that can scream across the battlefield? I'm sorry, he doesn't have a 10-inch. He has a 7-inch move. 
I think the thing that bothers me about them, because I don't, it doesn't bother me nearly as much as you, is that this, it's so much extra verticality to the models. Like, if it were me, you cut that scaven off, like right, if you cut that that rock off right right underneath his feet, or if you cut that vampire off right underneath his feet and like just his foot's leaning on like a gravestone, that's fine. But like, you're adding like an inch and a half to the model. And that's a little excessive. Yeah, it's like <clears throat> they want to be taller. Yeah, like does that look like does that does that guy standing there on that rock look like he has a twenty one inch threat range because he has a triple that lets him make a free free move? <clears throat> yeah, well, maybe or, he's throwing that. It's a sword. You can even throw swords. I don't know. How, is he like swooping down or something? This that's dude weird. swoops. This dude swoops. <laughs> yeah, and so that's cape. resin. That's yeah, that's resin. But man, yeah, I'll, I love that sculpt. Uh, you know. Oh, so is that a proxy? No, that's that's the that's the real one. That's the current one that they sell. Oh wow! So he well, he was previously known as Deathmaster Snitch, <clears throat> and then now he's just the generic Deathmaster. A lot of the name characters in the Skaven got killed off uh, during the apocalypse. <clears throat> but uh, okay. uh, yeah, all, a lot of the leaders and stuff had 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 uh uh complete names and lore from the old warhammer fantasy battle days but yeah, yeah. that yeah I'll, i like i like the old one better but and the other thing about so another thing here the death master here is the selling point for this new box set so mm -hmm. people were talking about this sylvaneth versus skaven box and i didn't see any details of it till uh actually this came out like today or yesterday and like the skaven reddit was like going nuts about this like so we get a bunch of the new sylvaneth models in this box right There's, that's when mm -hmm. to sell the box lady of the vines is a new biggish centerpiece model which is kind of cool looking you got the new archers Sweet. right and then you get this new death master and then you got storm vermin and clan rats like probably you know if they don't have new sculpts that's the same old ones they're gonna you know they're moving old they're moving old sculpts here the screaming bell has been mm. out for a while um yeah so this is like so this that's is not something yeah this is not something you, probably not something you want if you're a uh if you're a uh, war cry player i mean screaming bell is sweet and all but like yeah this is this is a miss for me No, the, so but to be perfectly honest, this is what I was most excited about over the whole three days of the whole three days of uh, previews here. So new, so new kill team. So kill team, at least for the first year of the new version of kill team, they've had they've announced a roadmap of a new box set, two new teams, a train kit, and everything else like that every three months. So guaranteeing yep. support, which is good. You can sort of count on it, and. Uh, yeah, we get Trader Guard, Trader Guardsman. So the the dude in the bottom middle there, the the uh, the commissar the and the best. Ogren. Yeah, the Ogren yeah. and the commissar. So those are from Blackstone Fortress. So those are sweet because before you had to get Blackstone Fortress to get them. Okay. So the whole of like a big Warhammer Quest box box game, and then everything else is new. Everything else is new. Um, uh, Imp Guard. They, there was previous uh heretic guard as well but so these are just takes on that in that same style and that again if you're into chaos or mad max or something like that like these guys look sweet it's very much that aesthetic <clears throat> yep uh the other half of the box is like you know more it's it's space marines it's space marines and phobos armor so i you know they're marines um uh, they're gonna have some new cool tricks and stuff the terrain looks sweet yeah i did love that terrain uh it looks super um compatible with the Nakmund terrain and you know my my thought this is very much just a, a for me thought is that um i could paint both of those in the same color scheme and then they would be just super um modal for dungeons and dragons a la star wars but yeah completely unrelated to kill team but that'll yeah, get me to buy it probably it was, yeah. It, I mean, we're we're probably looking at some sort of box splits for either the current or the or the next kill team box set. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, money and money and schedule priorities all uh, all aside there. 
And then also here, so there's a handful of other 40K stuff that got got previewed. And so most of the time, the 40K stuff like has guns and it's really looking sci-fi looking. So it doesn't really translate super well to Age of Sigmar or Warcry, but you got some cultist leaders here, that dude with the sword, you got the standard bear, like those look sweet and there's no guns on them. Doesn't, or actually, well, okay. One guy's got a gun on a holster, but like they look sweet. You could, those things could pass for fantasy. You got some, you got these new crazy, I can't remember what their name. You got possessed cultists and you got like these other crazy things that are like, halfway towards being a demon prince like there's some serious body horror going on here oh so. i love it like uh mm. that one on the bottom right like his arm looks like looks like it has a face that's like half gone on it that's sweet yeah. um and then that one in the top right his face is like melded into his chest that's grotesque yeah i, love yeah, it. I don't I, I don't know if I don't know if Fred had seen all this stuff yet but i mean this is like up his alley because he's all about mm. he's all about stuff like this it, I, I think the vibe is that of those two um, outside units, like the larger ones, it looks like the demons are kind of bursting from the humanoids. Body. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's the deal behind him in the lore. It's like oh, they're, awesome. they're 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 it's a demon prince awakening and coming out of them, but not quite or like the process got messed up somehow. Mm. So there's like there's possessed there. So there's like chaos space marines there's possessed to have like some tentacles and stuff like that going on and then there's these guys which are a step above possessed and then there's also like straight up demon princes as well <clears throat> awesome all right and brings us to to a close for this episode of big war cry club before we go i'd like to give a big shout out to all of our subscribers we now have an official youtube url so you can find us more easily so we're, we broke the hundred point you can also find us on the official Warcry Discord. I post there as War Machine. And I post there as Yagmoth for Prez. And I think, Zach, you still post on Reddit and Twitter as well? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to be a little bit more active on Reddit. Uh, I do just repost all of our episodes, uh, the links to our episodes on Twitter. Um, so, yeah, you'll see them there under Yagmoth for Prez. I retweet them. But I also we also have our own Dayton Warcry uh, Twitter at Dayton Warcry. So check us out there. Okay, and then uh, so next weekend we have another look up, another local meetup plan. So when we come back, we'll have some coverage of that. Plus, I'm thinking it might be time to do a tier list. What do you think about that? Oh boy, yeah, I'd <laughs> love to do a tier list. Controversy. Video. So uh, yeah, if there's nothing else, any uh, anything else that? Yeah, just uh, make sure to like and subscribe, um, and please go ahead and leave a comment. Um, something you want to see in the future. Uh, we are making sure to read all the comments and try and um, uh, tackle those as quickly as possible. Some of them are like, hey, play test this list. Um, and that takes a little while. Um, and if Salty C did comment that he wanted to see that triple salamander list, and it's in the works. So, took requests for that. Yeah, we had someone else ask, uh, I can't remember the name. We had someone else ask about Night Haunt. And like, ah, sorry, man, none of us play Night Haunt. But, uh, you know, if, uh, if we ever do, we'll give it a shot and give us some impressions for sure all right thanks for listening have a good thanks night. guys bye and cut awesome <laughs>